Welcome to Creativity, the podcast where art and engineering collide. In this podcast, me and uh, my partner, Max Maker, talk about art, uh, creativity, anything, and anything in between. Um, today, we have a very special guest. His name is Brian Locke. And um, anyway, can you say hi, Brian? Say uh, what's what you do, I guess. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Locke. I'm a software developer as a day job, but uh, evenings and weekends, I'm a maker doing YouTube stuff with Arduino and also selling electronic kits on Tindy. Nice. Now, now you're, I guess you're, I don't want to say hobby, but you're, I guess, maker interest. I, I guess you could say it's kind of in the realm of uh, Raspberry Pi, ESP8266, Arduino, etc. cetera. Is, is that an accurate description? Yeah, I, I mainly work with Arduinos and ESP8266. I, I dabble in whatever is... Uh, the best tool for the job. So I have done Raspberry Pi projects and stuff, but uh, yeah, that's that's definitely mainly where I'd be focused. Okay. Yeah. And your, your day job factors into that too, right? You're a software developer. Can you tell us maybe a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so I work for a financial services company. Um, up to quite recently, I was a regular app developer. So just working on business applications, um, both front end and middle tier. But uh, recently I moved to their proof of concepts team. So we would develop proof of concepts for um, kind of emerging technologies. So things like VR and AR, just investigating the technology, seeing what works well and what doesn't work well. It doesn't have to be uh, a killer use case for it in the context of like our company, but it's more to just get ahead of what's coming. And if that does become the next big thing, then we'll have experience with working on it and we'll be ready to kind of pounce on it. Also, some of the Arduino stuff kind of filters into it too, because, you know, IoT, it's not too emerging anymore, but that sort of stuff is... Um, still interesting or even say if you're working on a vr application like with the arduino things you could make a custom controller to do something or make it easier for people who aren't that used to vr to be able to control things and yeah uh my my youtube channel was actually like part of my application process for this team in terms of i didn't make it for it but like my resume was mainly hey, go look at all these projects I did as part of my YouTube channel. And it was probably the main thing they were interested in. So oh, you awesome. mentioned a couple of uh, technologies there, Arduino and um, VR, virtual reality, what was the other one? AR. AR, um, yeah. Are they actually, and, and the Internet of Things, of course. Um, I've, I've been hearing them for a very long time now. It's probably, I don't know, 10 years are they actually picking up VR and AR? Because I thought by now we would all have VR um, in our homes, but we don't. Yep. Uh, in ways they are. Um, so for example, Oculus um, released a headset there in 2018 called the Oculus Go. And so this is basically like a cross between if you've ever used Google Cardboard with your phone and a standalone headset. So basically the phone and the screens are built directly into the headset. So you don't need to slide your phone into it, but it's like a $200 device. And uh, I know companies like Walmart are using them for training and uh, things like that. So it mightn't be mass adoption in the, in the consumer place but there's definitely some adoption in the industry and uh like some people some people reckon that it might be the workplace of the future in terms of instead of your company having to buy you a desk and a monitor and a computer or whatever <laughs> I could just stand in my living room <laughs> pretty much yeah that like is in they'll give you six monitors in vr because it costs the same as one monitor um i don't see that I, I happening hope I still get a chair. <laughs> yeah i don't see that happening because like it, it definitely like you can't spend extended amounts of time in vr like even the good quality ones like the vive like it it doesn't make you feel ill most of the most of the time but definitely if you're in it for like an hour or two when you come out of it, it you aren't you feel a little bit groggy 
so I can't imagine spending like six hours or seven hours in VR. It'd just be crazy. But maybe things will improve with that. Like I know um, at CES, their HTC announced a new headset. What that'll be like, I'm not sure. But um, it's definitely an interesting space. Um, I, I agree that like it's been out a while and there hasn't been any like major, major adoption yet. But it seems with like, I, I guess what has been out a while is like the HTC Vive. And that's, you know, uh, a high-end computer with a five or six hundred dollar headset, but say that Oculus Go solution, you know, that cuts the cost right down, and even the setup right down. You don't need to bring around a high-performance PC or or whatever. So it's an interesting is, space. Is it worth getting one for playing at home? Would you recommend it? Uh, I don't think it's significantly better than just grabbing a headset and dropping your phone into it. Like it's better for. Uh, like a product solution that it's, you know, mm-hmm. all one device. But if you wanted to just try yeah, it sure. out, I would just get a cheap kind of headset. Even like they come up in like specials and stores. I, I want to say Aldi and Lidl, but I don't know if the American listeners uh, <laughs> will know where what they are, but they <laughs> definitely come into our stores every now and again, those headsets that you just drop your yeah. phone into. You, you should be able to pick them up on Amazon and stuff too for like 20 bucks or something. Okay. I would like to game more, but then I've got a Mac, so I, there aren't a whole lot of games that I can play on a Mac, and I don't really feel like installing Windows again. Uh, I had it for a long time um, using Boot Camp, and that worked well, but I just I, I don't want the hassle of that. So if I could just play with my Mac, that would be fantastic, or with just a standalone solution, you know. But I don't also don't want to cut down on the quality of the games. Um, I want something that's, you know, great quality um, graphics and all of that. And it's a shame that that isn't out there yet. Yeah. um, I know that Max, was it last year, they released their support for um, external graphics cards. So like if you have a Mac laptop, that kind of solves the lack of horsepower issue for playing games. But I don't think the support is... uh, for you know with the games developers is is there at the moment i do have a mac but i like when i play games i just use my windows pc so i I am not actually too familiar with what's available in the mac space but it still doesn't seem that uh like your initial assessment which is quite fun i don't know if you heard about it it's like the survival open open world survival game yeah i've watched a few youtube videos on it and thought that this is something that i would lose my life into if i started playing it so (laughs) like if a game is longer it actually puts me off playing it more so i've never played skyrim which most people find surprising but it's like i know i'd like it and i'd know i'd spend 100 hours at it and i just uh, don't want to spend 100 hours at it so yeah yeah, that's why I enjoyed Call of Duty and Battlefield because I can just play, you know, for half an hour or maybe even just twenty minutes, and that would be the end of the game, and then a new game starts. So I don't have to invest a whole lot of time into it. Rainbow Six Siege is my uh, vice at the moment. Uh, I'm enjoying Another that game a lot. I can't play on Mac. Yeah, um, <laughs> no, it's it's good fun. Uh, I I mainly use it. There's a f- few of my friends. Um, I kind of live in the middle of nowhere. Um, so there's a few of my friends who play Rainbow Six in the evenings and we just jump onto a Discord and chat away. It's actually uh, it's actually quite social. It's my social outlet during the week. Um, so <laughs> yeah, no, it's good fun. Uh, it sounds sounds cool. I, I guess I haven't really played in a while. I, I um, or Anything in a while, really. I, um, I just remember when World of Warcraft first started really taking off and I was like, <laughs> that looks like so much fun, yeah. but if I ever start playing it, I'm not going to stop. So I just, I just never did, and and now I just don't have time. For, I just don't have time for that. You know, that was like 15 years ago. <laughs> I know. I am. Um, you know, it was a while ago. But uh, yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I was the exact same with something like World of Warcraft. I was like, I just no, <laughs> I can't. I can't <laughs> dig into this like that. <laughs> Everybody thought that I was addicted to, to playing computer games and World of Warcraft. Like my family, they were really concerned. And then at some point I was just like, ah, can't be asked about World of Warcraft anymore. And I just stopped playing altogether. <laughs> Went cold turkey. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely wasn't an addiction. It just wasn't fun anymore at one point, like very suddenly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it just seemed like at some point, and it was well after World of Warcraft came out, but I... 
I just remember at some point it was just like, it's just isn't that much fun for me anymore. I, I don't, I'm like, this is kind of sad because the games look so good now, but oh yeah, I'm just not interested. <laughs> you know, <it's, laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's, I don't know. I guess, you know, Max and I run our own businesses. So it's, you know, like part of it too is just like, well, you know, I could do that. You don't this. have free time. I don't, I don't. And plus I've got, you know, I've got kids too. So, and I guess, I guess that's one thing we want to touch on with you, Brian, just the fact that, you know, you've got a regular job and you run a, a Tindy store and a YouTube channel and, you know, you stay, and apparently you also have time for gaming too, which I, I'm jealous of, but, you know, with kids and stuff, how do you manage to arrange your time that, that way? Is that, is that tough? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really tough. Um, so like some people have asked me before, yeah, how, how do you, how do you manage all of it? And my answer is normally not that well, uh, or at least I don't feel like I manage it that well. Um, yeah, it, uh, it's definitely a challenge, um, for sure. Uh, I, I do a lot of the fulfilling of Tindy orders and the making and stuff after my daughter goes to bed. Um, so, uh, I'm actually missing bedtime this evening, which is great. I appreciate, uh, appreciate the timing <laughs> of recording this podcast. Um, well, you uh, know, we, we knew you could use an excuse, so, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> For for sure, for sure, it's a challenge. Um, I don't like making videos and uh, like designing boards and things like that. Th that is my hobby uh, for sure. Like that is like some people would whatever go fishing or do whatever. Even like so the games. I, I definitely play a lot less games than I did a few years ago. Like. Uh, I, I would cut that down to maybe, you know, a couple hours a week or maybe three or four hours a week. Um, so like most evenings, if I'm not too tired or whatever, I'll be working on a video or a board or, or something. Um, and also like, I don't know if she'll listen to this. She doesn't watch any of my videos, but she might listen to this. My wife is very, <laughs> uh, very supportive <laughs> too. Um, uh, not Didn't sound like that. Not in a <laughs> watching videos kind of a way, but in a like allowing me to do stuff kind of a way, and not that I need to get her permission or anything, but like, yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, even say if I want to work on something, uh, said this weekend or whatever, like I'd have to say, hey, would you mind looking after our daughter for a few hours or or whatever while I lock myself in the office and, and work on it. Um, but one thing that I, I definitely have to say as well is that she has been helping out with the Tindy stuff um, for the last month or so, and it's a huge help. So she's been helping fulfill, fulfill orders and uh, even... I got uh, a pretty large order for one of the products, um, kind of a wholesale order. So I had 200 of them to assemble and she oh, wow. was there wow. doing them with me. Like, so <laughs> they're, um, they're my power blockers. Uh, they're for the back feed problem in a 3d printer. Uh, when you're using Octoprint with it, that sometimes your pie keeps the screen of your printer on, um, so it's the exact same as like cutting the five volt line of your USB cable, except it's just an adapter that does it for you. Um, so mm -hmm. I was doing the soldering of the headers and she was, um, she was applying the heat shrink to go around them. And she was also using the automated tester that I made for checking that they are working as expected and there's no bridges or anything like that. So she was, uh, like she was there working with me with that. My daughter was in the room drawing pictures as well. So, uh, yeah, that was a fun <laughs> family uh, weekend. But uh, like that, that sort of stuff is a huge help. And it, it was great as well because, you know, the, that scenario where I was talking about, like locking myself away, like if she wasn't helping me doing that order of 200, then I would have been locking myself away for two days. Excuse me. And... Uh, two days just literally going through everything I needed to do to fulfill the order. But because she was there with me, like, you know, we were talking, it wasn't like I was just isolating myself away from everybody. So it was, it was good. 
Um, yeah, but her helping out with the Tindy stuff makes a huge difference. So she is a, a stay at home uh, parent. Um, we're actually expecting another child in April. So um, that uh, ask ask me again in uh, April or May <laughs> what I'm doing, and I'll probably <laughs> say nothing. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, um, so she. Uh, like I even built a tool actually. So when you get a, a an order through Tindy, you get notified via email. Um, but she doesn't have push notifications of my emails, uh, obviously enough. So I actually built a tool on the ESP8266 to uh, like query the Tindy API and uh, like it, it keeps the last order number that it knows about. So if it queries the Tindy or, or Tindy API, gets a newer order number than it knows about or a different order number than the last one it got, it sends a message to a, a Telegram group that me and my wife are in. So t- Telegram <laughs> wow. is like WhatsApp if, you, if you're not familiar with it, but it like allows for bots. Yeah, it's used used by the Trump administration. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was a red flag. We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> um, yeah, well, it's, you know, it's pretty... For, for, for better or worse, it was used, right? What was it actually? I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I actually yeah. don't know. <laughs> no, it, 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 it literally was. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's main stream uh, on media. I think was like John Oliver talked about it in, in terms of encryption and uh, terrorists using it. Even though I don't think it's any more suitable for that purpose than whatsapp is but uh that's another story but um yeah so like when uh, an order comes in it queries the tindy api and parses the data out so it sends a message into the group that me and my wife are in saying hey there's a new order from germany (laughs) for two power blockers and has a link to the, the to the tindy order so like if my wife is at home and she has some spare time, she can go in and click that link and uh, open opens up Tindy and she can see all the details of the order if they got some special, like if they left a note or, you know, whatever options hmm. they selected with it. So she can print out the order and, uh, yeah, um, that's kind of... Did that actually save you money? Uh, save you time yeah it does uh well because uh, I, I think it would probably take me uh, a day at least yeah. to program that uh, so, so yeah probably not uh if so the telegram thing i, I wrote a, a library for telegram for the esp8266 mm-hmm. about two years ago um and i i keep i keep that maintained at the moment on, on github or whatever and uh like so that element of it it took no time whatsoever. I, I did spend time creating a library for the Tindy API. Uh, so that was new work. But that library is now like available. The, the amount of people who would want to use it is probably pretty small. Like only only sellers on Tindy would have any use for it whatsoever. But um like it it's there for whatever other projects people want to use it for. Like maybe you could have like a, a an order count like display or whatever. Maybe that might be something people are interested in. But yeah, it's probably not that useful of a library and probably wouldn't have saved me a huge amount of time if we like take how much time that took. But um it's all fun. You learn new things when you're doing it. And I'm if one person finds it useful other than me, I'll be happy enough with that yeah true i mean uh, jeremy and i we always upload uh, our stuff that we build on youtube uh, onto instructable so people can build it what we have built and i don't think lots of people actually do that that's that's an interesting thing actually uh yeah i, I i've talked about this before with people how much times do people actually build what you describe in your videos or on your instructables like i've released a few instructables too and the amount of times i've gotten a picture of the thing that i instructed is so small like it's zero for me and i always ask them like send me a picture when you're done when they ask questions uh, there is one person who i i know made a, a project that i did like they sent me uh a tweet and had the picture of it and i was so happy about it and uh actually kind of funnily (laughs) enough um just recently as well they they came 
they came across another video that I had done um, about setting up a pie hole on your Raspberry Pi. And uh, they posted a tweet saying, hey, I got this set up. Thanks a lot. Like, as in, And, you know, as a maker or whatever, that stuff is is great. Like, it's such validation that, hey, somebody actually used what I spent all this time like describing in great detail. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> if, if anybody's out there, if you follow guides for things and uh, you find things useful, make sure to let your let your makers know. They'll uh, really appreciate it, or at least I do anyways. Yeah, I, I sometimes notice, notice people um, when they ask really specific questions, then I can tell, okay, they actually looked at the code. Yeah. I, <laughs> one thing uh, um, I did was... Uh, I wrote a YouTube subscriber, like the YouTube API library for Arduino as well. That was one of, I think it was the second one I ever did. Telegram was the first one. Um, and I see tons of people using that. And that is great. I, I think I've been removed yeah. from the equation in terms of like, people will say, hey, make sure to grab this library or whatever. And some people will say, oh, it's by Brian Locke or, or whatever. But I'm actually even okay with that. Uh, I'm delighted that like people are making use of it. Like even there was I, I don't know how I came across it, um, but there was a group of like woodworking channels and they were challenging each other to make a YouTube subscriber counter. Like one person provided all the code and they were like embedding these subscriber counters in different woodworking projects. And I was like, this is so hmm. cool. Like isn't it just <laughs> Like, uh, hopefully that the libraries just make it as easy to get your YouTube subscriber counter uh, or count as almost like blinking an LED. So, you know, it just enables more people to do that kind of stuff. And like, I, I find that super cool. Like even say Dave Jones of the EEV blog made a subscriber counter out of Nixie tubes using the library and uh, Becky Stern did a couple you are a couple of subscriber counters are a, cu a couple of social media counters using some of my libraries. And it's just like, it's, it's a great feeling seeing something you worked on being used by people. Oh, that's, that's neat. I didn't know the one that Becky Stern made was actually, so that was based on your library. That, that's pretty, that's pretty neat. Yeah. 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 Uh, that was really interesting too, because that was, I think it was almost, I might have just started making videos when I came across it, but I was, I had no presence whatsoever. I have no idea how she came across it. N no idea. And like, I've actually talked to Becky a few times on the back of that, like as in, she, she's great to, um, like she's given a good bit of advice over the years or whatever on different aspects of things. She's probably the first maker I've ever spoken to. And uh, yeah, she was great. And yep, to this day, I have no idea where she came across it, but yeah, she, she made it her own. Sometimes what happens on YouTube is a complete mystery. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I came yeah, across it. funny, I saw, um... oh, go ahead. I think I came across it on Instructables and I was like, oh, somebody made a YouTube subscriber counter. I was like, oh, I wonder how they did it. And I clicked into it and they're like, download this library. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> and so, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that's always, it's always neat. Or at least I assume it would be neat when people come across, come across your stuff and it's like, oh, that's for me. That's, yeah. That's have, nice. have you noticed anybody building a Roomba yet with your code? Uh, no, not not yet. I, um, you know, I, as, as I, I pointed out several times that that last robot I made doesn't look anything like a Roomba. I, th I think, you know, Roombas aren't painted like that. They don't have Omni wheels. And, you know, I mean, just because it's shaped like a circle and a, you know, foot foot in diameter, and a couple of inches tall. I mean, I think that's kind of, uh, it's kind of rude of you to say that, Max. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I need an apology. <laughs> No, you know, we went oh, over I'm that. I'm sorry, it's totally not a robot, Roomba. It's not a Roomba whatsoever. No, it's, it's funny though, you but, know, it's all seriousness. You know, I don't, I don't know if you've seen that video or seen the, <laughs> seen the robot, but <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I, I've got a, got a couple of those myself. Um, but, but, you know, you make something, you design it, and then you put it together and you say, at least in this case, it's like, I, I've created a Roomba. I, I, I knew that. I didn't. Max didn't have to point it out. I, 
you know, he, he enjoys <laughs> he enjoys pointing that out, but that's that's okay. Yeah, I, I've I, I've had that exact scenario before. I I spent a lot of time making a a remote a Bluetooth camera trigger. So like, I got an Arduino, got a Bluetooth module. I flashed the Bluetooth module so it supported HID. So basically, like it would send the up volume command to your phone uh, or maybe it's the down volume. It's one of the volumes and that triggers your phone to mm-hmm. take a picture. And uh, like I built this thing and it has a built in battery and I was like, okay, yeah, this is, that's a selfie it's stick. It's basically a selfie stick. Yeah. <laughs> I bought, uh, I bought a, a thing from AliExpress for $1 and 27 cent. It takes a coin cell battery and works perfectly. Like while my one is, you know, maybe like 60 or uh, maybe eight centimeters long and, you know, it's quite big, has an 18650 cell in it. It's just like, well, this was pointless. Like is it even any element of it? The, the case was more expensive than this uh, nice little Bluetooth uh, remote trigger. And I was like, well... This was pointless. I didn't even make a video out of it, so it was really, really pointless. But isn't it interesting? I always feel this connection when I build something and then I realize, hey, I designed this feature exactly the same way as this guy did with his product. And that's just because that's the best way to do it. Yeah, yeah, that that's true. Um, yeah. that's, that's a very positive way of looking at things, Max. That's, that's, a, that's a good attitude. Yeah, that's like, oh, look, now... I, I need I need an angle here, and then you add the angle, and then you look at the cat, and then like, oh, this reminds me of something. Oh, this is exactly <laughs> how this thing is built. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. It's like physics, you know. You discover the same rules on two different planets. Yeah, that's I, I don't think mine mm-hmm. was too not elegant. That ever, so. Not that I ever have. No, I haven't discovered any <laughs> physics either. <laughs> Yeah, but you both had the same idea of using the the uh, Bluetooth to control the, uh, yeah. the up volume yeah, up yeah. button. Yeah. Just well, the Chinese did it better and, and smaller cheaper. and everything. Yeah, <laughs> with yeah. less resources. But it, it it probably has more lead in it though than, than Brian's. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I, no. I, I I'd say I'd say mine is pretty leaded. Um, okay, you use lead in your solder. Yeah, um, or at least. I don't distinguish. Uh, I actually, up till quite recently, I was using solder I bought literally 10 years ago. Um, and uh, I actually can't remember if it was leaded or not leaded. It doesn't work as good as the leaded solder I have now. So I'm maybe thinking it wasn't, but also it was 10 years old. So maybe the flux had dried up. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> um, but uh yeah, it uh, probably had its fair share. Oh, that's all right. But that, that brings up kind of an interesting point, though. You, you do some videos. I don't know how often you do them or whatever, but I guess you, you it appears that you're in the habit of just buying random stuff on AliExpress, which which I, I never do. I mean, not that I, you know. Me neither. Nope. Yeah, none of us do except for you, I think. <laughs> and, you know, just kind of shows up in the mail randomly in uh you know, you pop open the mailbox and you're like, oh, that's a fun package that I, I mean, I guess, I guess I do that too. So, but you know why I don't do that is because I have to pick it up from the customs in Germany and they're complete. They're really bad people. <laughs> I've actually heard <laughs> really I've bad heard people. And it's a really bad experience. So the way customs works in Ireland is, uh, so they don't, they only charge it if it's over uh, 26 euro in value, including delivery. So that's one thing. Oh, so most here. of the stuff in, uh, I think it's an EU l- law actually that makes it twenty six euro. So it's, it's no surprise they're the same. Um, but uh, so most of the stuff you buy from AliExpress does not come anywhere near that threshold. So that's that's okay. But um, even if it did, what they would do is they'd bring it to your door and say, "Hey, you owe us." Uh, 25 euro or whatever the <laughs> the price of it is not no. not in germany <laughs> we're uh we're, we're a more modern society yeah, I, apparently I, <laughs> i've never had that happen i don't really know how we handle it i i guess we handle oh, it in, in america you get sent to prison straight away 
you. Yeah, they just, they just, that's right. Cause you know, whenever somebody sends me something over $50, they just, they just throw me in prison. But the mailman, that's why they call him the postmaster general here. They come in with the military. It's, it's interesting. No, and, and, um, and Jeremy sent me a little Christmas uh, gift and he's like, oh, there's a little Christmas thing in the post. And I was like, oh no, I have to got to pick this up did, from did customs. You, like, did you have to go to customs no, for that? Was, no, they said okay, it's not on. a <laughs> said it's not a value. It's not a value. Well, I thought it was pretty nice. <laughs> That's what it said on it. They said they checked and said it's not a value. Well, that that kind of makes me uh, makes hurts my feelings a little bit. I still enjoyed it very much. Well, thank, thank you. you. I'm glad it was you a, it was a little notepad with my name on it. So I guess it's not of high monetary value, but customs people don't understand emotional yeah, value. That's right. Don't have Sentimental value was through the roof. <laughs> it but, is. It's in my workshop now. Nice, nice. But all, all that to be said, you you do these videos where you sometimes just open up a bunch of packages from China or where, wherever, right? Yep. That's got to be pretty exciting to watch. You know, from a, you know, from a. So what do you buy? Uh, what do I buy? Um, anything that I find interesting that I come across uh, normally. So, like, like as I was saying, like this would be my main hobby so you know the, the old adelaide you'll you'll spend whatever you have so uh i have to find ways of spending <laughs> spending my spare money which isn't a huge amount now or anything don't get me wrong that's why i'm buying off aliexpress um but uh yeah just uh yeah if i come across a board that i think is interesting or a sensor or anything i kind of keep a list of projects that i'd like to do that list gets longer all the time never shorter mm -hmm. uh, well maybe it gets one shorter uh at a time but uh in general it just grows and grows and grows i, I uh I, I reckon if i didn't buy another single thing I would easily be able to do like 50 or 60 projects, no problem. So I'm wow. a bit of a hoarder um, and I'm not afraid to admit that. Like, uh, like I actually have, uh, as I said, I think earlier, I, I live in the middle of nowhere um, in, in rural Ireland. So I, <laughs> I actually have a spare room in my house, which is my office and it's, full of stuff uh it's just uh packed to the rafters of bits and pieces now I, I do have a few empty component drawers so maybe i should get back into buying stuff but uh no it's just mainly <laughs> anything that i think that i'll need so the, the problem with buying off aliexpress as well is like say say you say tomorrow i want to work on a project and you go okay i need a diode or a transistor or i need a connector of some description if you're buying off aliexpress like if i bought off aliexpress right now i like with chinese new year especially i, I mightn't get that product till april maybe like i've i've had stuff take over 90 days to deliver so you need to be buying projects in advance when you use something like aliexpress so even like if I had to free next day delivery on AliExpress stuff, I probably wouldn't buy as much stuff because that cool project that I saw and I might want to do, I could just buy that stuff when I'm about to do the project. But now it's kind of like, okay, well, if I do want to do it at some stage, I better get it in advance. And it's probably a terrible way to be, but I, uh, I've always been a little bit like that. I'm a bit of a bargain hunter in my, uh, like, uh, how, what's the best way of describing this? But like, say that there's like bargain alert forms and uh, I don't know where the, <laughs> what the equivalent would be in, um, in, the, in the US or in Germany either, but like as in where people would post, oh, this thing is half price or this computer is half price or uh, this whatever is like reduced and you know, oh, maybe I might buy that or, or whatever. So I used to do a lot of that. So I'd end up buying things that I don't really need or, you know, they might be interesting things, but uh, yeah. So I, I don't do that so much anymore. That's been replaced with just buying cheap stuff off AliExpress. But uh, 
it's uh it's fun <laughs> um the the post bags the, it's interesting i I am not a huge fan of post bags myself as a consumer of them. Like sometimes, sometimes I like them, but in general, I would prefer to watch a video of a guide more than, uh, th- than a post bag one. Like some people are, are very good at them and they, they make them interesting. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's something I'm good at, but people seem to enjoy them all the same. They're, they're kind of like a steady, a steady video. Like I could, if I released a post bag tomorrow, I could probably tell you how many views it was going to get on, on the nose. You know, it, it's not going to be, it's not going to do well for you. It's, you know, as in, it's not going to do better than your subscribers or, or anything like that. But, uh, but it's, it's interesting. Um, but since I started selling on Tindy, I, I find myself buying less and less stuff off AliExpress in terms of just random things. I, I probably buy a lot more. Um, I probably buy a lot more, maybe stuff in general. But I tend to buy it off the same crowd that I'm buying the PCBs off, so it comes in the same box. Yeah, I have to pay a little bit extra for shipping or whatever. But you know. Like when you're selling things, like that little bit extra sh- uh, worth of shipping is is worth it for the more consistent uh, like supply chain. Like so, the power blockers I can buy everything from the power for the power blockers of uh, JLC and their parts company LCSC. Other than the heat shrink. I can't buy that and I can't find that anywhere locally even. Um, so like w- when I got an order mm-hmm. of a hundred of them in first, I had the PCBs. I didn't have the, I didn't have the USB headers, but I was able to buy them off LCSC and use DHL, but I could not find a good supplier of the heat shrink. And I ended up getting one on amazon.co.uk and uh, it took two weeks to come and then it hadn't come. So, uh, I got my money back and reordered from them. And I I had never dealt with this person before that I was selling the things to. So I felt really under pressure to get this out because I had said I'd, you know, I'll probably have it ready in the next, you know, week or two or, or whatever. And, uh, so I got refunded and then I, like, I didn't have any other option but to buy it off the same person on Amazon that I just had had a failed, you know, <laughs> interaction with. And uh, that week, both orders arrived. So the, the original one plus the, the new one that I had made. Um, so, like, this just this week, actually, I bought... Sorry, just this week, it arrived, like maybe like 20 or 30 meters of uh of transparent heat shrink uh for the power blockers that i just bought off aliexpress to front load it in case i have more orders in the future because i want to be able to react to it fast like is and if you said to me brian i need a thousand power blockers when's the soonest you can have them i can have the pcb ignoring chinese new year i can have the pcbs and the the USB headers here within like almost a week from China. I definitely have them sometime next week, but the heat shrink, I, I wouldn't yeah. be able to get anywhere. So I need to pre-stock that. So <laughs> like that would be a bit of advice I'd have for someone who's selling things to like, if you can find a supplier that you can like react quickly with, and then you don't need to stock as much stuff. And if, the like the dream big order comes in you'll be able to do something about it like if somebody asks for a thousand power blockers i don't know if i have the heat shrink for it uh and i just wouldn't have a solution to that problem either i'd have to just say i I can't fill it you know so um that's Mm -hmm. that's an interesting problem yeah this chinese new year is really puzzling to me like they're so productive and you know they do so much work in china and then suddenly everybody tells me oh we're all gone like this will take at least <laughs> yeah. two months longer now everybody's on yeah, holidays it's it's, yeah. uh, it's crazy all right I, I guess it's it's similar to us around christmas like we're all or the holidays uh, yeah but christmas is 
two weeks, isn't it? And then in Chinese New Year is a yeah. month or so? Uh, it's, it's not that long. I think it's more that um, <clears throat> there's just such a backlog of stuff when, when it comes back online that it just completely impacts everything. So like Chinese New Year, according to LCSC, is the 28th of January to the 11th of February is when they're kind of impacted by it. So um, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, yeah, it's I guess a couple of weeks, but you'd imagine like they're still taking orders right now. So you'd imagine on the 11th of February or whatever day they're actually open, they have two weeks <laughs> worth of orders that uh, they have to process. So. And I don't know about you, but when I come back in January, I'm not the most productive eater. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'm really productive right now. <laughs> I know, I'm back into the swing of things now. Well, uh, I, I'm jealous you guys get two weeks off for for Christmas. That's uh, that's great. But I guess I guess Americans have the reputation of not ever getting time off, right? Is that that kind of the international? Yes, yeah. that would be our perception. International. Yeah, you are. <laughs> uh, that's probably two weeks. I get um, I get 27 yeah. days vacation. No, I agree. I, off uh off 20s oh that's awesome yeah. and and now you work for an american company too is that can i, can yeah, I say that's that? Is fine. that is um, that correct yep um so it, it's it's hard to get into like what exactly the breakdown is because i don't really know but I, I work like i work for the irish arm of an american company so we're almost like subcontractors to the american arm of it or whatever the main american arm so uh like it well the, the first thing to say is the minimum in ireland is 21 days so or yeah it's 21 days so it doesn't matter if you so, are so wait, wait 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 the minimum is is four weeks plus yeah, one day if you're a full-time employee it's 21 days so five yeah like four weeks plus a day yep Oh, that sounds awesome. My, my last job, I had three weeks and I considered that, you know, that was good. I had to negotiate for that. Um, yeah. So the, also, the 27 anyway. is like a, a uh, lo is it loyalty? I guess, <laughs> I guess that's the correct term. Like they start with 22 and then give an extra day for every year of service up to 27. Uh, so, um, yeah. And that's not including the weekends. That's, that's like during the week. During the week. So yeah. That's I, like five. That's five. So that's five. You could take five weeks off if you wanted plus to. Plus the two days. Yeah. Whatever you would do. Yep. And. Uh, wow. Well, that uh, sounds like fun. And, and, and uh, tell them about health. Healthcare. Oh, yeah. We get that for free. <laughs> um, well, actually, the, the Irish healthcare is. is How much does insulin cost? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's free. I'm not sure, actually. I don't have diabetes, so I'm not sure. But um, it. Uh, yeah. So. As part of the job, we get free health insurance, but that's not as necessary in Ireland as it is in the U.S. Um, like, it, there is a. Are you are you guys healthier? No, is that no. It's uh, it's just basically things don't cost a fortune in Ireland. Like, as in, like I, I, I am only familiar with the U.S. system through like you know news stories or whatever. But you hear of people like going bankrupt from being sick. Like that can't happen in Ireland. It, it just won't. Like, so there is a, I, I won't say it's a perfect system because it is absolutely not. There's huge waiting lists on some no, stuff. It's, it's nowhere, nowhere it's perfect. But if you had a heart attack and you needed to be seen, you would be seen and there would be no charge for it. Basically, there might be a, a 100 euro accident and emergency fee, but that's it. Like if they had to have two surgery or two surgeons for 24 hours it would be done like as in if it was a life-threatening thing it would be done and it'd all be covered um no no questions asked and uh but if you have like say a torn knee ligament you might be waiting two years to see the consultant for mm -hmm. that True. so that's not great but yeah. you know yeah it, and I, th I think that's the debate that people get into here about that. Just, uh, you know, do you cover everybody or, do, you know, you got to ration it somehow as far as that goes. But I guess we're, uh, I guess we're getting a bit into politics, <laughs> but y y y you know, it, it's just, it's just one of those things. Like Max said, it's certainly, certainly nobody has a perfect system Yeah. and I'll just, 
I'll, yeah. I'll say that's, I'll say that's got true. You've size too, you know. I really like Dunkin' Donuts and they're on every corner in America. Yeah. Here I have to drive to Hamburg for an hour to get a Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, well, Donut. that's, that's just Donut. ridiculous. Yeah, we have actually, yeah, believe it or not, Max, if you ever come, uh, come to Palm Harbor. I know, it's right yeah, behind it your is. house. It literally is. Like I've taken my, my kids. Yeah. We yeah. uh, one Saturday morning I was like, okay, kids, we'll go walk to Dunkin' Donuts, and we uh, walked there. Got a got a couple donuts and whatever. And um, you know what else might make you a little bit jealous is that oh. my son's been begging me to take him to the pool, and I have to tell him it's a little bit too cold still. Yeah, even though it's it's warm enough out, I just feel <laughs> like the feel like the water is a little bit too uh, probably a little bit too cold at this point. Is this an outdoor pool? Yeah. Yes. It's are, are there are there indoor pools? Is that a thing? <laughs> Just kidding. There's <laughs> exclusively indoor pools. <laughs> uh, I am pretty certain there's no outdoor pools in Ireland. Maybe there's someone who can correct me, but uh, uh, yeah, it's definitely not a common thing in Northern Europe to have an outdoor pool. I, I wanted to uh, do some uh, motor testing for my electric hydrofoil, and I bought a rain barrel for that and waited for like two months to fill it up from rainwater. And now it's frozen, so I have to wait till <laughs> spring. You, you guys might find this interesting. I, the um, the college here, one of the colleges in Florida is Florida State University. And, you know, I, I, was, I didn't go there, but one of my cousins was telling me that went there. He says there was this fountain that all the kids would just, it was just fun to like, I guess, after a wild night, you go in there and start, start swimming in the fountain. And, it, you know, they kicked the kids out. <laughs> but then they decided that they would actually make it a, a public swimming pool that had lifeguards and everything on it. And now, now apparently that's, that's not the cool place to swim anymore, but you know, I, I don't know. This is probably, I guess that's anyway, that's, um, I guess that's not that interesting of a story, but I guess the people, it, it was people, good enough. Yeah. I mean, people enough. have committed to this podcast. So this, we're, we're 47 minutes into it. So at this point, if, you, exactly. you're, still if you're listening, listening now, you're probably driving and falling asleep. <laughs> It's too difficult to turn it off. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, I guess um, actually, actually, on the subject of things that we should probably talk about, um, I guess we. What have you done this well, week? Well, before that, let's. Um, Is it that? No, one? I was going to say we should talk about our, our Patreons. Okay. We actually have some extra Patreon, extra our, our new Patreons this week. So, oh yeah. You know, as we. <clears throat> so far, we only heard about Steve Booker. Right. Who, who is so there we now? have. Stephen Booker, our oldest Patreon, we appreciate him, but we also appreciate our new Patreons, Positive Underscore Waves and Old School DIY at GFC62. We're, uh, you know, hmm. glad they decided to jump on board and we're, uh, you know, hopefully they've been happy with, you know. We need to thank them for their positivity especially in the form of cash. Yes, that's right. And I wonder what old school DIY is. I, I don't know. I think um, the at GFC62, I think that's his Twitter handle. So you can you can check him out there. And um, yeah, I think Stephen Booker's on Twitter I'll too. He, his, his icon is a uh, chocolate taco. So that always makes me a little bit hungry when he, he pops up. Um, I don't know if you have... <laughs> what is a chocolate taco? Is that a same? You guys don't taco? have chocolate tacos in Germany? That's uh. Is it the ice, the ice cream? Ice, is it? Yeah. See, the, the Irish know about the choco. I, I never had a taco in my life. <laughs> You're missing out. I, actually, I don't know if I've ever had a choco taco. To be honest, they always just look delicious. I've had one. Have you? <laughs> I, yeah, they're they're basically a taco ice cream in, in sandwich. I, I don't know where I had it. But, uh, <laughs> We've I have traveled outside of Ireland once or twice. Um, no, not I haven't actually traveled recently. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's it's like an ice cream sandwich in the shape of a taco, but it has chocolate dipped on it. I, I'm sure there's plenty of different ones, uh, but it was good. I, I like ice cream. Yeah, we've got spaghetti ice cream here. It's vanilla ice cream pressed through a die, so it looks like spaghetti. And then they've put uh, strawberry sauce on top, oh, so it looks like uh, tomato sounds, sauce. That sounds way Th better that... than initially. I initially thought when you told me that. I, it, it is pretty good. Oh, and underneath there's a little dot of whipped cream, and that whipped cream gets frozen. And frozen whipped cream is really amazing. Oh. Wow, that sounds like a. I'm gonna have to like take a... your word word for that. That, that doesn't yeah. sound overly appealing <laughs> to me. 
Uh, so, my dog really likes goes to bed. Yeah. <laughs> She's excited about <laughs> spaghetti ice cream. Yeah, um, I'll have to give that a go sometime. I've literally never heard of that. Well, it's a German film. Yeah. I, I never have yeah. either, but it, it uh, sounds you know. pretty good. Except, I, I agree with Brian though. The, the the whipped cream at the bottom, it's a little strange. But you know, I mean, I mean, how bad do whipped cream be? Yeah, cool whip, cool, cool whip. Cool cream. Cool that's whip. that's not whipped cream. Is it not? No, it's uh, artificial it, it's like... artificial cream. Oh. Ah, okay. No, it's real cream from cows. What's the specialty that you eat in in Ireland? Apart from beer. Guinness. Uh, and, um, and haggis, right? I, Is that there? You know, it's... No, that's a Scottish oh, sorry, thing. Sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's okay. Um, yeah. Uh, no, like, it's funny. I never expect people to know uh, the intricacies of Ireland because we're such a small country. Like, is it, we're insignificant in a global scale normally. But uh, we punch above our weight in terms of being recognized. So... I definitely am not uh, I'm never bothered when somebody says, oh, isn't Ireland known for this? And it's like, I'm surprised you even know we exist, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, what is, that's a good question. What is our specialty? Um, food wise, our food culture is poor. Uh, like we don't, ha- you know, and we don't have like a, a spaghetti bolognese is like, you know, synonymous with Ireland or anything. Maybe like, a fried breakfast, an Irish an Irish breakfast, like rashers, you sausages. Mean a full English breakfast. We'd call Ooh. it a full Irish breakfast, but uh, <laughs> the, there are similarities to that for sure. Um, maybe like a stew, which is kind of like a like a soup with uh, vegetables and maybe chunks of beef in it too. Uh, no, no, I, I, I think that S-T-E-W. sounds E W. Uh, that sounds no, mm-hmm. I, I agree. That sounds like sounds something. Edible. In my mind, if you saying that, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. And I think that's something we eat in America sometimes. You know, <laughs> stew. I guess, a, I guess everybody eats stew. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but in America, it's fried, of course. Obviously, deep fried. Yeah, that's true. We have a, um, a plethora well, of deep fried foods here. We, yeah, like I actually don't know if we're too uh, too famous for anything after that now, food wise. Beer ways, <laughs> we're up there. That's true. I, you know, it, Not that I'd know anything about it. You know, <laughs> you know, you say that about Ireland, but it, you know, it's it's. I don't know. You know, it, it. If you, you say Ireland's a small country, and I guess that's true. But it, I guess the amount of, uh, the amount of what's well, not press, but the collective. It seems like there's more collective thinking about Ireland. They, you know, like you said, they punch above their weight in the collective consciousness of the world. So, or I think, at least in America. Yeah, I think a lot of that is like a lot of people uh, have Irish descendancy. Like, as in, there's mm-hmm. f- five million people in Ireland, pro- probably not even, but something like sixty million people around the globe claim to have Irish heritage. So, you know, that that's a significant. Uh, portion of the population, I guess, and uh, really, that's that's I, amazing. I don't know, other than that, no, that's an, an amazing statistic. And and you've got a holiday that's St. celebrated Day, all over yeah. the world. Yeah, everybody likes that. Yeah, even in Germany, they celebrate it. Yep, we're all tired of it over here. <laughs> right, we could take or leave St. Patrick's Day. That's not true. I'm tired. I'm tired. Of it, I'm tired of it. I, I don't know if uh, other people are. I suppose when my daughter is a bit older, um, like she'd have interest in going into the parades or or whatever. But uh, I, I uh, it's certainly its novelty has worn off on me. Well, it's like when we've talked to uh, you know in- English people. I think what was it? Um, you know, we had an English person on, and it was right about the time when. Look, my no computer. Yeah, not not well. Yeah, him, but um, what was it? Matt Brailsford. You know, we were talking about. I asked him oh, yeah. if, something about the wedding of Prince Harry or something, and he's like, "Oh yeah, the I don't." Monarch, you know. and he was like, "The." <laughs> well, yeah, he said couldn't care. He, he couldn't care, and, and yet yeah. Max, Max told me they had champagne in the morning, and my wife was my yeah. wife was all, all about it. You know, her friends like, "Oh, you know, Prince Harry got married." Well, you know, not that that's how she talks, but you know, they they enjoy that kind of thing, <laughs> and I, you know, I. But the actual English people don't seem to. Well, I don't know. Maybe they do. So, 
So, I'm basing this on one, I, on one person. Different problems at the moment. Well, sorry, what was that? Yeah, uh, the the general consensus in England would probably have been a little bit more positive than that. Like it wouldn't have been everybody was crazy that Prince Harry was getting married. But even in Ireland, like as in it was like I would have absolutely no interest if if they were getting married in my back garden i'd close the <laughs> curtains like i would have no interest in uh, in any of it but like as in it was it was highly viewed on tv and and things like that it, it dominated news coverage here for sure so i guess i'm not the target audience but like it, it was it was sought after news if you could even call it that but uh i'd imagine it was the same in in the uk i guess it maybe a 20 to 40 year old man isn't the target (laughs) i I actually am familiar with was it matthew um oh yeah matt brailsford and uh like is is look mum no computer simon uh I, i can't imagine he's like too too high on the the monarchy eater he he kind of reminds uh, no, me of no. uh, the sex pistols um i'm pretty sure yeah. like um pretty sure I, I checked out his youtube channel and there's this uh the, the, there are videos music clips from the band that he was in and that was really good music and he was kind of the front singer yeah and he's not a very good singer oh. sorry but <laughs> singing is not that good but he was the front guy of that you know the lead singer and it was really good music. I really like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't stick know. To I, the I just YouTube stuff. So. <laughs> watch, watching him play that synth while he sings. I mean, that is he's certainly the best singer I've ever seen that can manipulate a circuit board at the same time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's re- he's a genius. He's really a genius. I don't like his voice that much, but I really like his music, and I wish he would put out more. You know, songs. The the intro clip he did for your uh, podcast was uh, was really good. Oh, it wasn't for us. It wasn't well, for us. <laughs> the <laughs> one that you, he his stole his for his YouTube channel. So <laughs> uh, it was He's, good. He said it was fine after the fact. So just, oh, yeah. you know, just, just to clarify, I, I listened. I listened to that song on, on, on in my in my car. Like it's it, it's on my uh, my it iPhone. Really good. It's easier I... to ask forgiveness than permission. So That's you right. won't be able to steal yeah, any music uh, of me. <laughs> I don't think there's any music on any of my videos, so uh, couldn't be any dif- more different than uh, than him. Yeah, yeah, that's always a. That that's probably true. But you both use a lot of Arduino. That's true. A lot of cables, lots of soldering, and, and you I both would, live I on envy his Furby generally... collection. <laughs> oh yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and and now his his Game Boys. He's got like 50 Game Boys. Nice. Can you imagine how like, well, I don't know, I guess I'm probably a little older than you, both of you, but you know, like when I was in, you know, school, it's like you had 50 Game Boys. I mean, you'd pretty much be the man. I mean, you know, one, one Game Boy was, <laughs> mm-hmm. you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. But... I still remember the day when I got my Game really? Boy. Which was your first one? That was, yeah. Uh, well, I was wishing for the white the crystal clear uh, game boy classic you know the one the see-through one so four double A's on got... the back like the large one uh yeah the really yeah. big one i think it was the first one probably and my sister a few days earlier she got the gray one yeah. and i was like yeah I, I would like the clear one please and my mom actually said okay i'm gonna buy it for you and i was so excited and when she got back i was still in kindergarten and I was like, ah, oh, the clear one is probably sold out. Which one is she going to get when the clear one is sold out? Maybe the green one. Like, you know, weird thoughts. Like, why would it be sold out? But that was actually the case. And she got me the green one. Nice. Nice. It still hurts, obviously. Do, I, do you want to talk about it? I, I pre- <laughs> No, I was so amazed that I predicted it. That's hmm. impressive. The green one was fine. The green one was fine. Yeah, as long as you can play a a Solar gear. Striker or whatever. <laughs> oh, I had one of those too. What's a Game Gear? You don't know what a- Sega Game Gear. Um, so it was significantly so more impressive than the Game Boy, except you needed like a nuclear reactor uh, around, mm-hmm. which uh, it took six AA batteries, and the batteries lasted about two hours, if I remember that's, correctly. That's true. At least it didn't seem like long to me. The the thing is, they had AC adapters for both the Game Boy and the Game Gear, but you know when you're when you're a little kid. You can't save up twenty dollars for the adapter. You got to buy that those batteries over and over because you can I, get your fix of gaming right there. <laughs> yeah. I also live like where I live. Um, 
So it's a town called Atlone in Ireland. It's like 20,000 people or whatever. When I was growing up, there was nowhere to buy games. There was no game shops or even a toy shop. So like I, I had to like only get stuff when I was in the city or like the nearest cities or get my dad to get it when he was working. So like it, I even if I had the $20 or whatever, I couldn't just go to the shop and get it. It'd have to be a strategic strategic thing like <laughs> that's true I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that but yeah i guess it would be would be a problem you know back in the days we had to look after accessories because if you lost them there would be no place that you could buy it and now you can just go on amazon and order anything <laughs> that's true and <laughs> it sounds like there's war going on in my house but um yeah that, that's that's it like it as in like it's such a different time. Like I could only imagine being a maker like 20 years ago. Like where would you buy this stuff? Like you probably yeah. off a catalog or something, right? Yeah. Like a I mean, yeah. phone in orders in a catalog. Radio Shack here back, back in the electronics day. Electronics are really expensive if you buy them in Germany. Yeah. I mean, they had, they had like local shops like Radio Shack and stuff like that, I, I guess. But you know, it's, it was super expensive, and I think that's a big part of why they went out of business. So that's, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, we lost our equivalent of Radio Shack last year as well, Maplin. It was also very expensive. Like, I, I, I had to get something for a project at one stage, and it was a reed switch, a dual dual function reed switch. So most reed switches, when you put a magnet in front of them, they close. So they're normally open. And sure. uh, then when you put the magnet in front of them, they close so that the circuit's complete. But I needed uh, a normally closed. So when the magnet was away from it, it, uh, it, it the circuit was closed. And when the magnet was closed, it opened. And uh, the only place I could get it was off Maplin. And it was like eight euro for one. For, and for from one. AliExpress, it was two dollars <laughs> for ten. I was just like, "Oh, yeah. I can't." Wait, just, just <laughs> one one of those tiny little glass tubes was eight dollars. That's that's insane. Yes, it euro, so it was probably oh, euro, closer yeah. to ten dollars. And it probably came in a blister. It pack. It didn't even come in a blister pack. It came in a, like a jiffy bag or whatever, <laughs> like a clear plastic bag. I, I would have felt better if it came in a blister pack because then I, at least I'd be paying for something. Like, <laughs> I once went to a map plan and I was amazed that they had everything there that you could need, like for Arduino projects. They had the Arduinos, the breadboard, the cables, the jumpers. LEDs. I was like, who's buying this stuff? Apparently like, not, not enough people. people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It it really mm. feels like something that belongs online in terms just because you're you're never gonna do the the volume that you need to do. Like towards the end, like Maplin <laughs> yeah. turned into closer to a Best Buy or whatever it was selling like consumer products more like toasters cameras yeah. not quite right. toasters but the cameras and you know speakers and, and things like that so bluetooth right. speakers or that sort of stuff uh, radio like, shack tried to, data, right? radio shack tried to hang on by selling uh, cell phone plans and you know cr2 or three two, two batteries for you know three three dollars each or something <laughs> <laughs> didn't work out no. for them either no. not at all and blockbuster yeah i, I think there might What's actually be one blockbuster like, I've never been to Micro Center. I've been to Fry's, which is pretty crazy, pretty pretty awesome actually. Um, which I think I think is like the equivalent on the East Coast, but but no, I've never been to Micro Center. I've never okay. been to IKEA either. Just in case, any, in case anybody's wondering, You're missing out. <laughs> yeah, so I saw it here. So, um, but I guess um, guess while we're talking about projects, what what have you been working on this week, Brian? Uh, this week I have been working on the Hackaday API library for Arduino or Hackaday IO, um, library for Arduino. So, um, I wanted to make a video on making a library that wrapped APIs, which is 
kind of a specific topic. I'm sure that'll do really well. Um, but uh, so I was like, oh, I should make a library from scratch. And uh, I saw on Twitter there recently enough, um, Adafruit posted like a picture of them like doing the Hackaday API, Hackaday IO API uh, using MicroPython. And I was like, oh, it doesn't look like anybody's done a library for Arduino yet, so I'll do that. So that was one of the main things um, I was working on. I had a good few Tindy orders this week too, so I was filling out nice. some of them, uh, which, awesome. is, which is great. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that uh, actually is quite interesting about the, the Tindy stuff, and I, I think I might have talked to you a little bit about this before, Jeremy, is uh, like it, it's hard to price that for yourself because it, I don't know if, if the main place you buy from is China, but it would be for me. So like say something like the power blockers, if you could buy the power blockers in China, they would be like a dollar for five of them delivered. D just definitely no, <clears throat> no question about it. And, uh, so then when you're there trying to price your one, you're kind of like, how, like, I need to make some money on this. So like, uh, you know, how, how do I price this? <laughs> so, um, no, no, I, no, I, I think I... the other thing. That that sorry uh, that people um, that that they don't factor enough time in for is just actually the the business of like packaging it and shipping it and like you might you might charge enough to pay for the packaging n not that but like if I said to you right now hey will you send me something that's on your desk like think about how long it would take you to like write out my address get a stamp from wherever you get the stamp from like post it and it's just like that is not an insignificant amount of time and like you know it, it can really chew up the time even if you're um even if you're taking steps to like try make it as quick as possible like i i bought a four sheets with like label stickers on them so when i get an order i drop that into my printer and like copy the addresses from tindy or whatever and print them off so i'm not even handwriting the addresses i have terrible handwriting so you wouldn't get them <laughs> if i did so i'm trying to save us all a, a bunch of hassle but like isn't yeah I'm, I'm trying to make things as quick as possible for myself and it still takes quite some time like y you could easily be like five or ten minutes just packaging one package just yeah. from start yeah, no. to finish maybe it's not five or ten minutes it's definitely yeah, five I, I always see this <clears throat> label this label printing as like it's, it's like a video games where there's a lot of traps that you can screw up yep. and fall and the game is <laughs> over like you you get the postcode wrong or change it out with with some other number and the password is just lost and then you've got like at least another hour worth of work writing emails asking the post guys what the password is and stuff yep. like that so yeah. I try to copy and paste directly from Tindy. So unless unless you've made a mistake filling in your details, the address should be the same. I'm not saying I'm flawless in this scenario either, but I'm, the, the thing I'd be more likely to do is like print out Jeremy's address twice rather than print out <laughs> your address once. But I try to allow for that by, you know, just before I go down to the post box, like sure. check. So like one of the things that uh, I was worried about when I was setting the price as well is do I need to go to the post office? The nearest post office to me is 10 minutes away. So if I need to go to, if I got an order today, do I need to go to the post office to send it out? And uh, I, I ended up, I didn't have to, that I could buy the stamps. The price of postage anywhere in the world for a large envelope in it is two euro and 80 cent and it's doesn't matter if it's going to the uk the states antarctica it i don't know how they get it to antarctica but like it's 280 everywhere so that makes it pretty nice. easy in terms of i just buy like i bought 20 280 stamps yesterday to so like if an order comes in i have everything here to print it off it some places like the uk like you can 
print off the postage as part of the label, you know, as in you pay the postage online and then give you a barcode to print off something like that would be ideal, but, uh, that's not, not available to me, but, uh, yeah. Interesting though. Yeah. Like as in definitely if anybody's considering it, make sure you figure out exactly how long things are going to take you and charge appropriately for, for me, I would prefer to not sell stock than to give away my time to, uh, too cheaply because I, I would value my time higher than I would value the stock. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree with that entirely. And yeah. I guess I should, I should put this out here. You know, Tindy is one of my clients and, you know, I do a lot of technical writing and stuff, but, you know, just even talking to some of the people there, you know, I, I think, I think people do sometimes sell things too cheaply because, you know, they compare themselves to, oh, if this is made in China, if, if, if a million of these were made in China, they'd have to sell it for a dollar. But you know what, if you're making 10 of them in the United States or in Ireland or in Germany or, you know, well, I mean, really anywhere, even in China, if you're making 10 of them, you got to charge a, you got to charge a serious premium for that. And I, th I think people sometimes get it in their head, get one price range in their head, even, even on a customer aspect, you know, and they, you know, go to that on the seller level, you, you got to, you got to account for your time and, you know, at some point it's not sustainable. Even, even as a hobby, you know, you say, <clears throat> okay, if I'm doing this full time, I got to, I got to pay for my rent. I got to, you know, you got to pay for your kids, you know, whatever food and stuff you got to, you got to pay for everything you're doing. But if, you know, even if you work for another company, you got to think, well, is this worth my, you know, is this worth 30 minutes of me playing uh, counter strike or whatever, whatever the fun game is now for, you know, for you millennials. <laughs> which I guess I'm, <laughs> guess I am one depending on how you define it. But, um, where am I going with this? You just got to charge enough, I guess, I guess. So to yeah. <laughs> explain enough. Yeah. Explain no, well enough. it's, it's really true because like you hit on it there too. Like this isn't, you know, like if you go, okay, I'm going to charge $20 an hour, you go, Oh, maybe $20 is pretty good because you know, if I worked in, whatever, a, a shop or, you know, I'd only be on $10 an hour. But you have to think that this isn't just general work. This is probably your weekend that you're giving up. Like, as in, think about it more if somebody came to you and said, hey, I want you to package these things up and sell them. How much do you want to get paid an hour for it? Like, I... I I don't know what the price would be. Like if you said, Hey, I want you to look after my Irish distribution, Brian, I'd be like, no, <laughs> there's no, there's no money that I would pay. <laughs> like you kind of need to think of it in a similar context. Like, as in this is your, this is your own private time that you're giving up and you just need to, you need to factor <clears throat> that into it. And, and I guess like one of the big things to do as well is, to figure out what you want to get out of it. Like, is in, is it make money? There's probably better ways of making money. I don't think Tindy would like me saying that too much, but you know, like say I'm a oh, software yeah. developer. If I wanted to like freelance software develop at the weekend, I would make more money than I would make selling stuff on Tindy. I'm, I'm nearly sure of that. Yeah. Like is in, <laughs> Yes, I, I would think so. I, I don't think anybody at Tindy would, um, yeah, I don't yeah. think anybody had a problem with me or you saying that, you know, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. Like, I, I think, I think know. it's very much a DIY, you know, I think it's not really supposed to be that either. I, I think, you know, it's not like, it's not like Tindy has pictures of people on yachts, you know, talking about how they, <laughs> you know, made yeah. their millions <laughs> on the Tindy, uh, whatever, I, I Tindy agree. World train yeah. or something. So, like, but, uh, for me, it's like what we were talking about with the um, the libraries. Um, like, it's amazing to see people like use it. For me, like, I, I see Dave Jones uh, mention it before. Like, sending out stuff gives you the warm fuzzies. It does. Like, as in, mm -hmm. it's it's really cool to see somebody actually go. Hey, this is a good product or a good idea. I would spend my hard-earned money on this. That's 
I don't know if you can hear my dog bark and he's looking to get fed, but uh, my wife is going to look <laughs> after that too. Um, we actually have two dogs too. Uh, uh, <laughs> they they do not get in the way of the making, thankfully. Um, but uh, yeah, like is in if you want to just make money out of it, probably better ways. If you want to send stuff out, it's a great way. Tindy is a, a really good place to sell things, to make it easy. The customers seem to be genuinely good i haven't had any bad interactions yet i'm over a hundred sales now and i've had a couple of things go missing in the post um i can't really do a whole lot about that i'd prefer if i didn't but um but i I completely believe that they were genuine it wasn't someone just going oh yeah they never showed up or whatever so um (laughs) like i've nothing but positive things to say about the like the whole like process of it but just definitely know why you're know why you're getting into it uh for yeah, sure i agree okay. so so what what about you max have you uh you've done anything interesting this week or this month i guess uh, yeah i made a lot of products for the upcoming season to sell them and yeah same as brian i build them i package them um they're all yeah in storage now waiting for the customers nice so and yeah working on new products with a chinese company that's really slow due to the holidays <laughs> so that's kind of thrown me back and we've got this little building project in the east of germany that uh is being finished as we speak and first of april the first renters are nice. moving in so oh, oh do you guys have uh, spend a lot of time you say with that. that is do you guys have april fools in germany or is that not a is that another thing no, you, well, we have it, but this is hopefully not. <laughs> this April this is serious. <laughs> people are, this is serious, yeah. And I finished a camera slider that I made for my friend in Colombia. Um, he found me over YouTube because I made a camera slider there, and he wanted a special camera slider, so I built one for him. I estimated two weeks, and it's been five <laughs> months. <laughs> that sounds about right. You sound like you subscribe to the same school of estimation as I do. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, um... But I learned a, really a whole lot uh, just about the machine design and what works, what doesn't work. So next one I could make much Four better. months. <laughs> Four months. <laughs> well, but you don't need to tell the customer that. Just say, well, it took me five months, so... You know that's you know that's thirty thousand dollars you need to pay for it, or maybe fifty. Well, yeah, I wish I had done that, but I gave him a quote for two weeks, so and I'm sticking yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, the next one though. But yeah, shipping was a nightmare. Ger- German posts is like, oh, you want to send a battery? Yeah, find another company about that. <laughs> I, I, so, I have the same problem. I think all post is is the same at the moment. Yeah, they said even if you send a watch with a watch battery inside, they wouldn't send it outside of germany uh, hmm. and then there's just ups and fedex <clears throat> left and they want 1500 euros for the for the parcel nice. to colombia hmm. so yeah he's getting it sent to america now which interesting <laughs> yeah they don't offer insurance for something that you ship to colombia <laughs> yeah. i wonder why but they do for if you send it to america so now we're sending it to america and there's a company that sends it to colombia say if you send it to no, it's not even a funny joke. I was going to say something about a uh, pluma or, or plateau, or is that what is that? That probably doesn't even make sense. I, I don't know. You've what lost you me mean. Too. <laughs> well, anyway, if you've seen Narcos, you would. I guess that would be a thing. Which, yeah, I think Narcos plays a <laughs> role in that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, yeah, I guess. Uh, and how yeah, so I've me? been working. But okay. yeah, I'm... yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I was just going to say, um, I'm finally cleared most of the things so I can start working again on the hydrofoil. Nice, nice. I was but that's it. Think, thinking about, about you, asking Jeremy? you about that, but didn't want to rub, rub salt in the wound too much. <laughs> For the 12th <12th laughs> month. So, yeah, I, I guess, um, you know, I guess, um, you know, I, I finished my uh, my Omni robot that looks nothing like a Roomba. So you can see that on YouTube right now. I got that, got that up. Mm-hmm. And then another thing I've been working on. That's functional. functional. That's right. Another thing I've been working on. Less functional. Less functional? What? Less. Less. Yes. Less functional than a Roomba, but but you know looks looks better. So that's that's good, right? And then um, another thing I, I had been working on, but I actually got it done early, which is pretty awesome. Is I made this um, got these buttons 
these pins that you put on like your shirt or whatever, backpack, whatever. I made a. Um... Yeah, true. You sent me yeah, one. Yeah, that's then. right. Okay. Two. Yeah, nice. it's on my backpack. Well, that's, that's, that's what they're there for. Great. So I got like I got a ton of these, and there's a Maker Fair coming up, the Palm Bay Maker Maker Fair, this weekend, which um, I'm assuming we'll publish this after this weekend. But you know, I'm sure it was lots of fun when I was there, <laughs> and and when I was there, I got to show off this new machine that I made that actually has an escapement which um, stops these buttons sliding on. So if you press and if you press this invisible button, it uses a um, capacitive sensor. Yeah, I feel like I'm not describing it well, but basically it's a slide for buttons. So it stacks up like five buttons. And when you push a button on this machine, it gives you a button. So like when people come by and say, oh, what does this guy do? It's, it's a, vending a vending machine, machine. like a That's free really vending good. machine for cust for people that come by and say, okay, I'd like one of these. They press the button, gives it to them and they say, oh, that's pretty cool. I'll check out Jeremy's YouTube page. I'll buy, uh, I guess I don't sell anything, but you know, if I did. That's a really yeah. good idea. Yeah, so um, yeah, well, I'll put a video up on that probably probably next week or something. It, it's um, really happy with how it works and stuff. So we'll see if it, it makes it through the show. So, but yeah. How many buttons have you made? Well, the buttons I bought, I bought them off um, for the sticker mule or something. But anyway, um, I bought like 500 of them. So so we'll see. <laughs> there's, there's like some uh, huge okay, price okay. breaks. You know, it's like 100 for, it's just an example. I don't know what it is, but let's say, let's say 100 is 75. 200 is $100 and like 500 is $150 or something like that. Something crazy like that. <laughs> so, you know, I, I found this website where I buy stickers for my company and they have this weird bug. I think it's a bug in their software. If I buy, there's a magic number that is the lowest possible price that you pay for the whole batch of uh, stickers. So let's say 100 stickers is $100. If you go to 101 stickers, it's just $99. 102, it's $98. And you find this magic point, maybe 123, and then it's just $35. But if you get 134, it's $36 again. <laughs> oh. Maybe that's a trick they want, you to think, they, so, they want you to think you're... So you get in total more stickers for less money. They want you to think you're getting a huge bargain, so you'll keep shopping with them. That's the... I think that's the trick. A little conspiracy, maybe. It it's it's working. <laughs> I keep buying. Do you, do you find um, like those promotional things that like a maker for? How, how do they work out for you? Do have you ever done kind of the the stats on them in terms of like do you see a spike in people coming to your channel after a maker fair like that? I I don't know. I it's it's very hard to tell. So so no, I don't see a noticeable spike, but. You know, I like to think that, you know, maybe maybe somebody in Germany sees that, you know, my sticker or my uh, thing on Max's backpack, and you know, a month later they're like, mm -hmm. "Oh, that's that's." I left one up in the <laughs> yeah, Alps. Yeah, left one up in the Alps. So uh, on on three thousand two hundred yeah, meters, which is which part of the Alps? Which is what, like like ten thousand feet in real real units, right? Free freedom units. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there was uh, Austria in. Have in Öztal is Öztal. the place called uh, Selden. You know, I could tell you names, but then they all sound really I, weird. I I went skiing in <laughs> Austria a few times, not for a while now, but uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Keep your eyes open. You might see the German. Probably as be well thing. buried by the time I ever go anywhere again. But uh, yeah, you never know. They're the high high, high quality there were stickers. Thousands of other stickers at that place. Yeah. So. Uh, Turns out a lot of people had the idea to put the sticker at the highest point of the highest <laughs> mountain. You should have, you should have had your dad put it up there. Isn't he? Uh, isn't he like a giant or something? Is that? <laughs> well, he he's two meters and ten. Wow. But wait, 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 wait. There was a, there wasn't anything higher than him. Two, you know? two meters. Everything was. You said at two reach. meters ten. Two meters ten centimeters. That is that is yeah, quite large. It's like it's seven like... foot something, right? Yeah, it's like a basketball nice. player. Well, good, good for him. Um, yeah, bad for shopping bad shoes. For, bad for shoes. Good for him, I guess. <laughs> so, um, so uh, well, on that that note, um, Brian, where, where where can we find you? Since we can't just pick you out of a crowd like like Max's dad. <laughs> I am uh, not. <laughs> yes, 
210. I think I'm 176 or something. I'm not even sure. So, no, you can't find me in a crowd like that. Uh, if you want to... Yeah, I don't have Red that hair. either. Brown, it's starting mm-hmm. to go gray. Um, oh, so well, that's got to be very unusual in Ireland. <laughs> you're you're green. one of the few people that had a brown hair, right? No, no, I think you're watching too many <laughs> cartoons. <laughs> we have normal hair color. I'd say the por- proportion of people with red hair is probably the same in anywhere as it is in Ireland. I think oh. it's, it's definitely not that common, but, uh, yeah. Uh, where can you find me? Uh, if you search for Brian Locke on YouTube, Locke is spelled L O U G H for some reason. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that, that's a fun one. Um, also you can find me on Twitter, which is, Oh, this name is coming back to bite me now. Uh, at witness me now. Uh, so that is my internet handle from when I was fifteen, and I've never changed it for Twitter for some reason. And like, it's fine when you're not calling it out on a podcast, uh, but uh, feel, feel, feel stupid now. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, we we all have stuff like that from when we were, you know, whenever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Most people just, just bury it, though. Uh, I've looked into changing my name. I hope nobody ever finds my YouTube comments when I was 20 <laughs> or 18. Yeah. Well, don't, uh, don't ever run for office in the United States, I guess. That's, uh... <laughs> oh, no. I didn't do any blackfacing, <laughs> but I have to say that picture was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if you've been aware, but there's this politician, and in his yearbook, he put a picture of probably himself he denies it but either it's him or the other guy but the one is black-faced and the other one wearing a cuckoo's Perfect. clown hat you know the the full rope <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, yeah, that was, certain uh... you won't find that in my past i hope i've buried it yeah. <laughs> pretty good <laughs> first he said it was him but he didn't say who it was, who he was now he's denying it now he says he was once blackface but he was dressed as michael jackson <laughs> what, so, is, what is what does that even enough. mean i mean if your blackface is michael jackson then then you have a white face i assume well, unless you're jackson five he said it's okay he oh, only yeah. he only put brown paint on his cheeks fine. so that's fine no problems <laughs> well, anyway um <laughs> Well, where can we find you, Jeremy? So, uh, yeah, you, you won't find me in a uh, any Virginia medical school yearbooks, but um, <laughs> <you can. laughs> yeah. So uh, on, on Twitter, my uh, my handle, my handle there is at Jeremy S. Cook, Jeremy S. S. Cook, and on YouTube, I'm also at Jeremy S. Cook. So I guess our creativity is. My creativity is reserved for the creativity podcast because that's, <laughs> you know, just my name. Mm-hmm. And um, what creative, what creative people, people need. need. Now, what about yourself, Max? Where can we find? Where can we find you? Yeah, I, I just want to clarify: black facing is not good. <laughs> Cuckoo's Clan is also not good. But the picture kind of has a humor to it. That's all I want to say. Uh, you find me on YouTube, uh, Max Maker, and on Instagram and Twitter. It's also Max Maker, and with youtube in it or something like that but you find me max maker it's a green logo yeah it's what max underscore yt maker or something like that yeah if you listened to 128 minutes of this podcast already you probably find me in real life because you're my girlfriend <laughs> yeah you, you also might realize that it's um well you also you also might realize that it's 88 minutes but that's you know none of us are in 128 minutes yeah that's <laughs> So, sorry. I'm pretty I, sure that's how I, uh, minutes work. Well, well done, Jeremy. Thank well you. done. Thank you. Um, you got me there. Well, thanks for being our guest this week, Brian. Yeah, it you're was welcome. really fun. Had a great time. And best of luck with your with Thank your you. yeah. I suppose I should best, best of luck. I should, and your I work. I probably should mention that anyway. you can find me on Tindy too. It's Brian Luck as well. <laughs> Seeing as I was talking about Tindy, maybe we should uh, oh, yeah. pimp that out a bit. <laughs> I think we've got, I think we've got that now. Yeah. yeah, you can find me on Tindy too. I, I think I sell stickers and a uh, quadcopter frame that I don't know. I think I probably have buried somewhere in my garage. So hopefully you don't buy that because it's. I'm not, I don't know if I can find it or not. So I should probably cancel that listing. 
<laughs> anyway, I guess that's um, that's a great ending to the podcast. That's it. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks.